cases, you'll notice the sci-fi stories will show that it's causing, it's damaging the people that are doing it. it in fact, that's exactly what I discovered before I left the media. I, I left in the 80s because I didn't really like what I was doing and the kinds of weapons that I was developing for men. You know, we did all the, up in, at, in Seattle, we did all the chip implants. Delgado was there before he moved to Yale. Uh, we did uh, the, all the drug studies with Dr. Moore. We were doing ketamine, telepathine, and BC studies. And then, of course, my work in microwave for mind control. And uh, there's a paper on my website called uh, Synthetic Telepathy and the Early Mind Wars. That's an interesting paper because that was what we could do in the 70s. Imagine where that's gone now. Then how do we know that we are picking up when we're being still and let's say doing some meditation and getting quiet? How do we know that what's coming in is something from the universe that's positive versus some entrainment from microwave stations? Yeah, I'm not sure that it's black or white. I'm not sure it's more like in living color. (laughs) Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. In fact, uh, I'm of two minds. How did Two-Face put it in the Batman movie? I'm of two minds on that. And, uh, you know, that's an interesting concept. The idea of voice of reason and the voice of coyote. You know, you've got the voice of reason on the one shoulder saying, stay inside the box. And then you've got your voice of coyote. Oh, it's okay. Take a peek outside. Step outside the box for a moment. Now, it turns out, this is the really good, interesting part, that the voice of coyote and the voice of reason are actually the same voice. We have polarized them because the voice of reason keeps us in the box and there is no change and you feel safe. It's when you step outside the box that you begin to have doubt, and with doubt comes fear and uncertainty, and that is very uncomfortable. However, that is also the place where you make changes in your personality or your lifestyle, and so the two are absolutely required, one for the other, to have a balance in personal growth. And what you need to do, what I need to do, what we all need to do, is learn how to hear, listen, and evaluate those inner voices of ours. This is how one gets closer to the Lord. It's called self-realization, because the ego or conscious awareness of us is primarily only there for survival. And what's very important, it's very, very important, um, you must always uh, realize that uh, sometimes it's safe to do that. And so you have to form this dialogue, and it takes many, many years to learn how to listen to your inner voice. I have personally decided that the inner voice is the nine-tenths of my cerebral cortex that I'm not using at any given moment, trying to have dialogue with that part that is aware, and that the two are trying to form union, because once they do that, I will be able to max my full potential. I've been told and read that the subconscious knows everything, is a knower. Well, that's your guardian angel. That's what they call the guardian angel. I, By the way, I apologize for not being able to turn off. Someone is being very persistent on my call waiting, and I don't know how to turn that off at this moment, so we're just going to have to uh, hear those little beeps as they come through. This is normally an office, and I'm normally on the phone at this time of morning, but now I'm with you. Um, the That uh, presumes another concept which ties it all together in suggesting that the brain is a four-dimensional hologram of five space. That means that all possible realities Everything is possible, predicated on which part of the brain you're observing. And that means that everything's possible. It's just where you choose to set up shop. And some of that, unfortunately, is done prenatally. I mean, you know, mom has a fight with dad, and you come out with an attitude or a chip on your shoulder. Uh, Sets up certain behavior patterns, sets up certain belief systems. 
Look at the difference in the way a dog is whelped and the devotion and love and closeness to spirit that that animal has that we don't. I think there was a, an author, Steve Gaskins, that wrote several books. One was called Monday Night Class, uh, and then the second one was called Spiritual Midwifery, where he suggested the way you're birthed sets up your belief systems and the position in the, where you work from the brain as to the kind of reality that you had. And his, He later formed a thing called The Farm in Tennessee. Uh, his whole point was that if we birthed our children differently, our children would behave differently. And that's true. We already know that, that birth and so on. But the problem is our beliefs have become gospel. And really, what the second book is about is how to use belief systems like you would a pair of clothing. When it's not appropriate, you take your clothing off and you change it, your belief system. However, if you're a Christian, for example, would you see the two aliens that walked in the door? If your belief systems do not allow that kind of a reality, is it possible for that reality to happen? And so doesn't mean you get rid of Christianity when you drop your belief systems. I, I have a pair of bell bottoms I'm never going to fit into again, but they represent a part of my life where I still keep them all naturally folded and neat in a special drawer that I like to bring out and look at because they're very close and very uh, warm to me and making me feel more like myself. Belief systems are the same, but sometimes... Those belief systems are not appropriate for a given situation. And that's why Navy SEAL was or trained to be able to change their belief systems by changing what part of the brain they chose to go to to observe reality. If it wasn't working, you change your belief. Talk about, if you would, the quantum realm. You had spoken earlier about the holographic realm. Right. And then you the also... universe has originally, one of the first ways we chose to look at the universe was that it was quantized. The elementary particles had basic building blocks in the universe, and that they were this way, not that way, and that there were mutual exclusions, or there were spaces between this and that that didn't happen or were not part of reality. That is because the brain itself has been hardwired to subcategorize into eight basic memes or ways of seeing things. And you know them. It's, uh, you know, your physical plane, it's your emotional, and right now we're doing intellectual, and there's archetypal, there's micro... Okay, there are eight basic neurologic circuits that Timothy Leary suggested. I, I like Tim. I liked his work, so I quote him more in terms of my reference point. And so we originally believed that the universe was quantized because of the way our brain would arbitrarily categorize one color from another. And you'll notice we have them in eight colors, just like we do everything else. A Fibonacci. Uh, that was Pythagoras. Basically, that's where the resonance part happens, where you have uh, it's resonating with these frequency bands over those frequency bands. And we chose to see the universe as being quantized. But now, and that led us to the way information was arrayed in entanglement and decoherence. That was set for the quantum mechanical realm. Then, when the holographic universe came out, we started to talk about information as information and resolution of the information, the level at which you chunk down to observe it. And that could be emotional or physical. And that's why when we started the program, I suggested they were all the same. It's the same information, but with more detail. And that is the difference between emotional and intellectual. Uh, but they're the same, really. It's just we are chunking them into quantized bits as a way to organize our memory. And that led us to believe that the universe was quantized. I hope that's clear. It's, it's a difficult thing to try to, to convey, and yet it's simple. When you talk about an automobile and you chunk it down, you know, you have your automobile and then you have the tire and then you have the lug nuts that 
connect the tire to the body, you know, that 